All right, guys, so we got the pipe position at a, at a 6G position. We got our tack on the bottom, tack on top, and then we got our tack on a uh, bridge tack on the other side, on the right side. So what we're gonna talk a, lot, a little bit about right now is a lot of people, when they position their tacks on the pipe, on the stand, they always put one tack right in the middle and then the other one right on top. Then whenever you're welding and you start on this side, your hard side, your difficult side, you're in an awkward body position and you're having an even harder time trying to weld from the bottom up. So what I like doing with my guys is whenever you put your tacks, leave your tacks offset a little bit towards your right. So offset your tacks to your harder side. So instead of you trying to start from the bottom and you know struggling, and now you're able to start a little bit upwards and it'll be easier to bring it up. So a lot of people are like, oh, I thought you couldn't do that. Yeah, you can, as long as when you weld this side, you're not welding downhill. So you're able to do this. So this right here is considered a flat position. So you'll start welding on this side, coming up, and then whenever you come to this side, you no longer gotta start right here because you already started a little bit offset to your right side. So that'll make it way, way easier on you. Anytime, whenever you're testing on a two inch or a six inch pipe, whatever it is, even on stick, always, you know, keep that in mind. I'll set your tax a little bit to your harder side and that'll make life easier on you on trying to make that root pass. All right, guys, so you wanna start off on the side that doesn't have any tax, you can either start, quarter your pipe and then come to this side or if you're uh, if you got a lot of faith in your bridge tack if you put a good tack on there you're able to go and run all your root pass on this side come back to this side once you get to the spot right under your bridge tack then cut it out you don't want to be cutting it out and you still don't get even, you still don't even get started if you cut it out and you still don't even start it on this side that pipe's still going to pull on you so keep that in mind okay Whenever you're welding and you got your bevels right here, since you're at an angle, we're still fighting against gravity. So you, whenever you're right here on the belly and coming up, keep your rod, keep your rod favoring your top pipe and then bring it down. Keep your rod on the top pipe and bring it down, okay? I'm gonna show you guys a little bit better once we get some good arc shots on this one, okay? So right here we're getting a sh uh, arc shot on the inside of our pipe. So if you guys are wondering where we're resting our rod at, we're resting it on the tack that's right above us. We're back feeding it. Uh, make sure that wire doesn't get away from your keyhole. If your tack is a little too far away and you had a lot of wiggle on your rod, you could put a piece of tape, you know, and uh, put a piece of tape on the pipe and then you could lay your rod on that piece of tape. That'll help you stabilize your rod um, as you're getting better with time, you could just lay it on the tack on top above you or just, you know, just put it on your fingertips, just put it on your hand and that'll work. All right guys, so we were on this side first, all the way to our tack. We stopped before our tack. We're gonna show you guys a little clip of how to do a proper tie-in right here. So now that we did this side, we're gonna come over and run this side all the way to our bridge tack. So what we're gonna do is, so we're basically freehanding everything right now. On this position, the easiest thing to do is just freehand. Forget about walking your cup. I like freehanding on everything, root, filler, cap, everything. If uh, you wanna throw a, a slicker cap, 
you know, walking for your cat. It's uh, a lot faster, you know, if you're freehanding it. Once you get better at freehanding it, that, uh, that cat will look pretty slick. So right here, we're holding our TIG rig, our thumb and our index finger right here on this side, and then we're leaving these right here so we could set our fingers on the pipe and then we're just we pretty much just walking it on our pipe okay um you're probably wondering which glove we're running right now so these are the the texas made uh tick gloves they're pretty nice got a little saying right there if it don't make money it don't make sense you know we're all after that money bag and right here we got a little bit something new something different we got our, our, our patches on our, on our two middle fingers. So if you're worried about, you know, our, your TIG glove heating up whenever you're welding TIG, these are it. Forget about using a TIG finger and all that stuff. That, this is all you need right here. Just, you know, just lay it on that pipe, get on with it. You can get another new pair of gloves and they're already on the glove. They're pretty flexible, they're really nice. And we got a, a nice pretty patch right here. So whenever you're on your pipe, leaning on the pipe, you know, for that heat, it's pretty nice. So we're gonna freehand this side. We're gonna get on with it right here, right before our bridge tag, and then we're gonna uh, grind our bridge tag out, and then keep going upwards. Right, so we're on this side now all the way to our bridge tag we're fixing to grind our bridge tag but right here at the end of the weld if you pay attention we got a spot about an inch that's a little too flush so we're gonna go ahead and grind it down and then we're gonna push it in there we're gonna grind it down cut it open and then we're gonna run our root on that little spot again I didn't like it so we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that All right, guys, so we uh, ripped our uh, bridge tag. We took it off, we cleaned up our bevels. And then right here, as you can see on the pictures, at the end of that root pass, we had about an inch that didn't penetrate. So I went ahead and I cut it open with the 1 8 grinding disc. I cleaned up on bevels and I took off my uh, metal shavings out of the way. So now it's nice and clean, it's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of our root pass. Our tying is a little bit offset since we left our tacks a little bit off, but that's fine, we're gonna run it up as much as we can. We're not gonna fight it. As soon as we get uncomfortable, we're just gonna run it for our, from our tack over to our, our root where we left off. So we're not gonna try to keep welding all the way over. Weld as much as you can, and then we're just gonna bring it and tie in over. We're able to do that since we're not welding downhill. We're all good with it, all right? So we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna heat it up real good. You saw it opened up. Now we're gonna start putting our wire in there.
right guys so a lot of times I see you know the, the guys that are starting off they're welding and they weld a little bit and then they stop they weld a little bit and then they stop so a little tip always keep in mind always put your body position favoring towards the side that you're gonna travel to okay you, right now that you're welding TIG you don't want to be behind your weld try to position your body in front of your weld okay another thing a lot of people are like, well, it's because I got to stop. I got to reposition my hands. Okay. So if you're welding and you got to stop, leave your rod in there. Move your tungsten to your bevel. Move your heat away from that center. Move it to the bevel. Reposition your body, your hands, and then come back in there. Heat it up real good and then take off. Okay. So we're going to show you a little tip on how to do that. Hopefully it helps you guys out just like it helps a lot of our students. Position your hand, now you can come back in here, reheat it up again, keep going. Alright guys, so what we're going to do, we're going to close this side up now. Instead of welding from this side and going this way and being in a bind, we're going to go ahead and bring it over this way. We'll be alright. Then later on, we're going to show you guys how to close this little window. We just left this just so you guys could see that proper tie-in on that. So right now we're going to come over from this right side to the left side. Fixing the tie in. I'm a dip, burn, dip, burn, dip, burn. There's keyhole in it. So right here we're just dipping, keyhole it, dip. We tie it in, so we're gonna stay here a little bit, dip a couple of times, put a little bit of heat on there, and then we're gonna go along. Now we're going to take it out to the bevel. Make sure you take your putt out to the bevel and then bring it up. All right, guys, so we pretty much closed this side. We closed this side. Now we're going to close a little window that we have on this side. We're going to show you a, a keyhoeing method. That's whenever you just keyhoeing it, you let it open up, and then you dip. Burn it, and then you dip. So right here we're working on our tying. Um, heat it up, or as you're welding, once you get uh, to that tying close, dip. Remove your rod and then burn it. Dip, remove your rod and then burn it. The whole point is to make sure you put enough heat as you're welding and tying into the other tack to make sure you get a proper tying. So right here we pay attention, we're heating it up. We skipped a little forward to heat it up and then we came back and came back to the dipping. So we're dipping and we're burning. Dipping and burning. And that's the tying right there. Once you close it up, stay a little bit on the same spot Add a little bit of metal just to push your metal in there and get the proper penetration that you're looking for. Whenever you pull out, remove your rod, pull out to your bevel, and then pull out slowly. You don't want to pull out in the middle. Then you'll get a pinhole. All right, guys, so right here we're in the process. We just finished up the root pass, but we're going to show you guys how to properly pull out whenever... Um, Whenever you're welding either your root or your hot pad, whatever it is, if you welding and you just stop right in the middle, you're gonna get a pinhole. A lot of you guys do that. A lot of you guys have that problem. If you just pull out in the middle, that pinhole could travel all the way in into your root, all the way. So say the hotter you're going, the, the more that pinhole is gonna penetrate. The reason is, whenever you're, you're fixing to finish off, what you're supposed to do the right way is, you're welding, you gotta pull your wire out and then pull your tungsten to your bevel. Once you see your puddle climbing to the bevel, then pull out. Because if not, with that arc, that'll give you that pinhole, okay? So right here, we're gonna show you guys the proper way to pull out. So we're welding, you remove your wire, Then you put to the bevel. Once your puddle goes to the bevel, then pull out. 
right here on this one we're gonna show show you guys the incorrect way so right here we're welding as you as you see as you can see we just stop it in the middle and that's right there that's the incorrect way all right guys so we finished our root pad we're gonna run a hot pass for the hot pad we're running a one day's rod we're running about 160 on a hot pass so the hot pass is really important if you're running too high you will suck that that root in or you can blow through or get a make a lot of heavy spots you know you'll get a lot of little nipples in there and stuff like that what we tell our guys we usually tell them to run with the 332 rod just to make sure you're fusing properly onto your root pass they're running about 140 150 on their hot pass as you get better, you can move up to a 1-8 rod, but just make sure you're running hot enough to burn that rod uh, properly. And uh, stay out of the middle. You don't want to stay in the middle too long when you're running hot. You stay in the middle too long, and that'll, that'll give you a lot of heat, and then you'll suck back that root. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You know, there's a beginner way, and then there's a, a faster way to run it. Hotter, more metal, the way a lot of these guys run it out there in the field, but that comes with experience. So if you're starting off, be careful with that hot pass. Do not weld too hot. If you feel like you're not, you know, melting that wire properly, turn it up just five. I see a lot of these guys, they see videos on YouTube, and they're, they come in here and they try to fill it up from the root all the way flush. Hey man, you're starting off. You know, want take baby steps at a time as you're getting better. We'll turn it up hotter, okay? So right here we're running our hot pass, one eighth rod, about 140, 150 amps. So right here we're leaving our wire on the top side and then we're just bringing it down. We're not adding a lot of wire, we're just lay, uh, laying our wire in there. We're burning it on the top, bringing it down. Make sure um, if you're going to stack up a lot of metal, make sure you're running hot enough to get a proper fusement on your hot pass to your root. You don't want to stack up a lot of metal and then that metal will be rolling on your weld and then have air pockets, uh, lack of fusion on, the, on your root pass. So we already uh, finished our hot pads. We're gonna cut that video right there. We're gonna post another video with the fillers and the cap. Well, basically this is uh, for you guys to get a really good idea of how to tack it up. I've seen a lot of guys uh, having a lot of problems how to put your, how to set your tags and if you should run a bridge tag or, or two penetrating tags and stuff like that. So there's a couple of good tips on this video. I uh, hope you guys liked it and uh, stay tuned, hit the like button. Stay tuned for the next one, guys.